everyone. Welcome back to another episode. I am in, well, we are in, I should say, not just me, there's many of us that are in full fall vibes, or maybe by the time you're listening to this, it's like snowing outside and it's winter time. This morning, there was the first bit of snow in Chicago and also, um, I think it's Minnesota, Minneapolis. I'm not very good with American geography, so I'm just going to leave the second place. But um, where Olivia lives, it also snowed there. I'm so jealous. But um, we might get some snow here. It actually does snow in Atlanta. Very rarely, but it's not very rarely. It has snowed a few times, um, my fiance said. So I'm really hoping that maybe this year it'll be a white Christmas. Actually, they were forecasting last year was going to be a white Christmas. It didn't actually happen, but there was snow on the forecast. And you know what? I will I will take the fact that it actually that on the on the weather forecast it even just has a snowflake. Like I will take that because I get so excited by it. And um the amount the, the amount that we actually ski it's kind of nice when we come home and there isn't snow that's inhibiting us from like getting out of the, out of the driveway or whatever. Anyway, so we are in full cozy vibes. The theme is brown today as usual. I'm wearing all brown jellies here. Obviously, he's brown. The chair is brown, the walls are brown, the curtains are brown. I love a brown <laughs> I love a brown vibe. Okay, so today's episode, I'm really excited to get into this one. And then I think I'm going to record another one today for you guys about the three key things. Look at him. The three key things that you really need to be doing to actually manifest your man. I know I've spoken about, or I did another episode that you can listen to. We'll link it below of how I manifested my fiance. But um, that was obviously more like in a storytelling kind of form. So I'm going to give you guys another episode that's a little bit shorter and more to the point, just on really like manifesting your man. And what I've noticed across the board has really worked for all of my clients. So I'm going to use... I'm going to use them basically as the proof that this methodology works. If you are watching a video, you need to look at Jelly right now. Like, what is he doing? I'm giving him a full massage under the chin and he is in heaven. Okay. So for today's episode, we're obviously going into cuffing season, which I had to explain to my fiance yesterday. He's like, what the fuck is cuffing season? I'm like, yep, you're a guy. So if you don't know what cuffing season is, and I think this is the best explanation. I haven't Googled it, but this is from what I know from what people have told me when I first heard about it is I think it might be more of an American phrase. I'm not really sure. Maybe I just was not old enough, I guess, to maybe use it or whatever when I was living in Australia. But cuffing season is basically around fall winter time where people want to find somebody that they can cuddle with and do Netflix and chill and just have winter with. Because in summer, it's way more of that, like that vibe of I'm happy to be single. I'm happy to be out mingling, meeting people. You kind of don't even want to be in a relationship in summer. It's just that summer energy that's in the air. And then when fall comes in, you want to be cozy with someone. You want to be having dinner parties with somebody. You want to be, you know, cooking stew and eating it with, with somebody on a Friday night with the fire going. It's a completely different vibe. And so there's this term cuffing season, which basically is describing, you know, this time of the year when people are wanting to find that person to kind of I, I imagine like handcuff themselves with basically for winter. Um, you're kind of like almost settling down for that winter period of time because you're more in that hibernation. Fucking hibernation, speaking of which, it is dark here until 8 a.m. in the morning and it has been a struggle to get out of bed. So I was thinking I might do another episode for you guys on what I do just during um, winter se- the winter time to really enjoy this season. I know for a lot of you that winter can be you know, a month where seasonal depression comes along, um, or sad, if you know what sad is. Um, and it's called, which is seasonal affective disorder. I don't think, I don't think it should be labeled as a disorder, but anyway, based for some people, they really can feel like it. Um, where during this time of the year, you get really down and really depressed. Me, on the other hand, I fucking love this time of the year, Christmas, the decorations, the snow, the cold, like give me it all. We had the fireplace guy over yesterday to like convert our fire into something a bit sexier. Anyway, Um, so I felt like it could be really helpful for me to do an episode for you guys on that. So let me know, um, uh, just send me a DM, whether that would be really helpful for you. And then I'll make sure that I organize that for you guys, um, uh, to get out ASAP before it's like too into the season where you're like, yeah, Monica, I needed this three months ago. Um, okay. But today we are talking about how to enjoy your single season, your single life and how to just enjoy being single. This is obviously coming from somebody that is no longer single. I'm in a relationship, but I fucking loved being single and I really, 
really enjoyed my single time. I used it. I I took advantage of it. I was grateful for it. And this kind of blends into some of the things that I'll probably talk about in that like how to manifest your man episode. Um, but for those of you that are in a relationship or not in a relationship, this episode is for you. So even if you're in a relationship, you need to listen to this episode because a lot of the things that I'm sharing with you guys in this episode, I did when I was single, but I still do it now. Because what I've noticed across the board that happens, and you know, people talk about this all the time, is that once you get into a relationship, you kind of lose yourself. You lose the things that used to make you really happy. You don't prioritize yourself anymore. And people start to really miss being single and they kind of shit on being in a relationship. Well, that's obviously not the way to be doing it because there's there's such a there's a reason why we go into relationships. And it's sad to me when people lose themselves and lose their independence in their relationship. So I'm going to be sharing with you a few things that you guys can be doing if you're single to be enjoying the single season. And if you're in a relationship, this is definitely going to apply to you as well. Okay. So this is obviously coming, like I was saying, from somebody that really loved being single. I loved it. I loved the, I loved, you know, just being able to be selfish, not having to involve anybody else in in my decisions. I loved waking up and nobody else being in my bed. And there were all these things that I really enjoyed about being single. And I mentioned this on another episode, but if you are finding in your relationship that you're losing yourself, I wonder what components you have let go of from when you were single that you really allowed yourself to enjoy. Because a lot of the things that you did and that you felt when you were single, you actually can still have them and feel them even in a relationship. It just takes a little bit more effort, right? But if you want to be sometimes waking up in your own bed, you can still be doing that in a relationship, right? It just takes a little bit more coordination and a little bit more effort to actually have that being your reality. Okay. So, you know, if you're feeling a little bit blah in your relationship right now, so much of that blah can just be coming from you not feeling activated and excited within yourself. You kind of feeling like you are, you know, somebody else's slave, let's just say, or, you know, you have to worry about the other person all the time, or you don't get to do what you want to do. It's this feeling of a loss of purpose, a loss of independence, um, just kind of a loss of of yourself, right? And so finding yourself again or feeling you again doesn't mean you have to go on a trip to Paris for a week alone. If you can vibe, do that. But it can also just be being really intentional with the things that you're doing and how you're spending your time and what actions you're taking at home, right? Ladies, I'm so excited to be announcing that my 2024 immersion is officially open for enrollment. Yay! I'm so excited about this. So, well, I don't know about enrollment, but you can like get your ticket, whatever, do the things. There are two locations, New York City or Paris. You can come to both. You can come to one. The events are the same. It's just simply a choose your location kind of situation. So tickets are available right now and you get $500 off if you get it during this current sale period, um, like open cart period, then the cart will close and the tickets will go back up to their normal price um, for any that are left, but we could sell out during this time. So please make sure that you grab this while you can. We also have an extended payment plan option that will not be available closer to the event time. I always have a few of you closer to the event time that ask if you can get a ticket and get an extended payment plan. The answer is always no, I'm sorry, but all payments have to be completed before the event time. So what that means is that if you need a kind of longer payment plan of six months, then you need to book your ticket now and not wait because the closer that we get, the smaller the payments plan, the, the I can't speak, the smaller the payment plans get. Um, if we even have any tickets available. So Paris, New York, 2024 immersions. I am so excited for my three-day ones to be coming to you guys in two spots next year. Like how good is next year going to be? Wedding, immersion, book, God knows what else. I cannot wait. I will see you there. Any questions, you know where to find me. Something that has been a journey for me as somebody that really loves to travel and really loves to just be in different places all the time and change up my scenery. I love change. I love adventure. Um, I love different environments. It really inspires me. Something that's been a learning experience for me and I am at such an amazing place with it now is finding so much expansion in my home. So this has always been a challenge for me of feeling really expanded in my home. But when I was stuck in lockdown alone in London, some of you might remember this if you followed me back then, is that I would really try and find a lot of expansion 
just being in my little townhouse by myself, knowing fucking no one stuck in London. And if you remember, I would take you guys on trips on my Instagram stories. And for like a whole weekend, I'd be posting different pictures and like making up these stories on my Instagram um, of like where we were in Ibiza or in Spain or, you know, in Spain, whatever, uh, or in like Florence or in Paris. And I would be really intentional with how I could make myself feel expanded being stuck in lockdown. I have continued that from when I, like I continued that through living in New York. I obviously still traveled quite a bit, but I didn't travel as much when I was living in New York because I just find traveling out of New York really challenging. To be honest, if you know New York, you know, it can be really hard and it's very exhausting, but I also just loved living in New York. So there was no real reason to be traveling everywhere besides obviously going skiing. And I had visa issues in the beginning and just like a whole pile of things. But nonetheless is that it is such a beautiful feeling when you actually find your home being expansive. Because for a lot of us, we want to escape all the time. We want to escape from home. We get depressed when we come back home after a holiday. We don't feel like our environment feels expansive. So if you can even during this season as well, can you try and find expansion in your home environment right now, especially if you find winter to be a really, really hard season? and you just want to escape to like, you know, the sun, can you actually try and find expansion now and in this season of life, like as in like the winter season? Because what happens is, is that I've noticed when a lot of clients is if they create this narrative of like, I hate winter, I hate this, or they have to leave during these seasons of life. What happens when you can't leave? What happens when you are eight months pregnant and you can't get on a plane to just go to the, go to the Bahamas during winter anymore and you're actually stuck now in the thick of winter in Chicago, for example? What then happens? It is really it, – it's a really great practice to find – the positive and to feel the positives or to make the positives out of experiences that you can often feel quite negative about. So during single season, if you, maybe you're like, yeah, Monica, cute for you, but like I've been single for 10 fucking years. Okay. That is shit. That is hard. And I'm not denying any of that. And I was not in a really committed relationship like I am in right now since like 20, uh, I want to say, wait, 2018, beginning of, beginning of 2018, right? That's when uh, my boyfriend at the time and I broke up. So I was then single for quite a few years. And yes, I would date and I would, you know, start dating this new guy and I have a little boyfriend for a bit and then it wouldn't go anywhere. I wouldn't really feel it. So I went through those, but it didn't, I didn't have anyone where I felt like, Ooh, could this be it for a long time? And I was getting really, really frustrated at the end of it too. But what I shifted into was really enjoying and embracing the single season of life because one day it's going to be gone. Right? So if you're in a relationship It's going to revolutionize you if you can start to actually bring some of your singleness back into your relationship. Being single is really, really important. You know, I know there's a lot of people, and I actually have written down to an episode on this, that jump from relationship to relationship and they're really afraid of being single. Being single is so important if you want to be in a healthy relationship because if you don't even know yourself, how the fuck Are you going to know yourself in a relationship? How are you going to hold your boundaries? How are you not going to lose yourself in a relationship? How do you even know what you want in the other person? I knew myself so well before getting into this relationship that I knew exactly what I needed and wanted in this relationship. So there was no umming and ahhing of, is this the right guy for me? I made sure that my, what I knew I needed to be happy was all fulfilled. And it was, he could, he could, he ticked off those things that I knew that I needed. So I was able to progress in the relationship, but a lot of women, they don't know themselves And so they'll get into these relationships and they're like, yeah, I think he's good. Like, you know, like, I'm not sure whether I, whether I like this or like, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. And of course there's going to be instances where it's okay if you don't hundred percent know whether your needs align, but it also means that you can then find yourself in more of those situations where three years on, you're like, oh, we're not a match anymore, for example. And that can, that can feel really draining and hard when you are dating and then three years in, it's like, oh, it ends again. Or a year later it ends. So if you find yourself in these cycles where you are 
never meeting the right guy or you're dating this guy, you're dating certain guys for like eight months and then they, and then it kind of ends or a year and then it kind of ends. And you just, you're finding it's this constant pattern. Either it's a pattern of not meeting anybody, not liking anyone, always getting in with the wrong guys or, um, you know, dating for eight months and then realizing this guy isn't for me. Those patterns are there to show you, or they're not really there to show you. They're actually just your nervous system being wired that way. And so you keep fulfilling the same pattern and that's your normal. But what I'm saying is I want you to look at these patterns as an opportunity of in this pattern is where your healing lies. Those bad patterns, those cycles, those wounds, those triggers in all of those is exactly where your healing lies. The issue is that they feel too painful where a lot of us don't want to actually look at them. And most importantly, most of us do not want to take any self-responsibility. We don't want to be the one to say, it was actually kind of my fault the relationship ended because I got into bed with a guy that, you know, X, Y, Z, and I knew that wasn't going to be a match for me, but I just kept doing it anyway because I thought that I could change him. So without to, without going down that rabbit hole, the bottom line is, is being single and really, really learning to legitimately love your life, being single where the guy is that cherry on top of, as I say, he's the cherry on top of your already gluten-free, dairy-free, sugar-free cupcake. Like there is the cupcake, there is the icing, there are fucking sprinkles, and then he is the cherry on top. And if he is not the cherry on top, that's where then unhealthy codependency can leak into. I've done an episode on codependency for those of you that haven't listened to it before. That's a really great episode for you to listen to so that you can discern between healthy codependency and unhealthy codependency because there is a difference. And I find that for a lot of people, they can go into hyper-independence because they're afraid of being codependent. But it's like, no, no, you can have healthy codependency and you can have unhealthy codependency. Like me and my fiance definitely have healthy codependency, not unhealthy codependency. We are obsessed with each other and it's actually annoying at times, but we also can be independent. And and in our bodies, we feel safe and our nervous system feels safe still being without each other. We don't like it, but but our bodies feel regulated during those moments, which is what's really important. So being single is not something that you want to deny yourself. It's something that you want to enjoy for yourself. I also want to say that being single does not mean that you have to go out and date and date and date, right? You are not any less cool if you choose to be single and not be on all the dating apps and not go on a million and one dates. I cannot tell you, I was literally in the the nursery getting um, flowers this last weekend. And I was talking to the lady that was checking me out. She's like, oh, you're the Australian that um, married the American and moved here. I'm like, okay, we, everyone knows me <laughs> at the nursery because I'm there like every fucking weekend in my like ridiculous weekend outfits. Anyway, which basically just consists of clothes that should not be leaving the house. Um, and I was like, yes, that's me. I was like, but I didn't move from Australia. I was living in New York. We met on a, on a chairlift and then I, I moved down here. And she was talking, she was obsessing about the story. She's like, oh my God, that's so cute, blah, blah, blah. She's like, oh, that's the way that it should be. We shouldn't be meeting on apps and blah, blah, blah. And here's the thing. I'm not anti-apps. And, you know, I, I really, I know that it's really important to have the mindset of being grateful for apps because like I'm, I, one of my best friends, she's one of my maids of honors. I have two, one in Australia, one in America. And one of my maids of honors, I met her only because, and maybe we would have crossed paths some other way, but honestly, we are in two completely different worlds. I don't know whether we would have. So I met her because a guy that I met that I was friends with back in London, I met him on a dating app. We were friends for quite a while. He moved to New York, maybe like five months after I moved to New York and he went to a gym And long story short, one of his friends from the gym didn't have anyone to go to Christmas with. And he asked like, hey, can my friend maybe come and have Christmas with you guys? And I was a little bit like, what the fuck? But I I was like, I don't even fucking know this guy. This is the weirdest thing ever. But I also was just like, whatever. I was post, I just had my fourth knee operation. I was like, you know what? I could use the fucking helping hands right now because like carrying a turkey and being on crutches all day is not really a vibe. So this is me like determined to make a turkey three days after surgery on crutches. I did it and it was not a good idea. My knee was fucked up. <laughs> anyway, so he came and he texted me. He was like, hey, can I bring a friend? She also doesn't have any family in New York and is not spending Christmas with anyone else. Like, of course, he brought her. She is now one of my maids of honor. So and we are just like two peas in a pod. Best friends kind of live without her. Point is, is if I hadn't gone on that dating app and met that first guy, I would not have met her 
what was it like maybe two a year later, two years later, a year and a half later, whatever it is. And so I am absolutely not anti-apps, but I also understand that for so many of us, we want to meet somebody in real life. And there are a lot of pros to meeting somebody in real life. I go into this in Embodiment of Dating number two. There's the masterclass, which I highly recommend for a lot of you. If you're wanting to learn to date well, you need to do the Embodiment of Dating masterclass, which I'm in the process of just kind of like revamping a little bit. It will be open at the end of November for five days for a flash opening. So um, if you want to make sure that you don't miss that, trust me. I'm not giving you too much right now, but trust me, you do not want to miss this opening. Um uh, make sure you're on the wait list for it. And then I'm working on things to make, to enable it to be open all the time so that, you know, if any of your friends need it and whatnot, they can join early next year and whatnot. Point is, is there's a masterclass, there's a money day number two, they're completely different. Ask if you need help on deciphering which one's best for you. But I get that so many of us want to have that meet cute moment and not just because the stories like the, the, you know, the movies sell us that story, but because it makes us feel secure, feeling that spark before we go out on the first date. And it's also just a nice fucking cute story. We're all romantics. We love fate. We love being able to say like our relationship is fate. Like I cannot believe that, like, I cannot believe that me and my fiance got on the same chairlift and that's how we fucking met. Like it literally blew blows our mind when we think about it of the fact that we were fucking strangers there was not one mutual friend like fucking strangers we met we started talking and now our lives are so merged it's literally like laughable I do not understand it and I also believe as an Enneagram 8 and a um, generator 3-5 that it was it was needed for me to meet him that way, not only because I wanted that and I claimed that for myself, so therefore I manifested it. I also talk about that, I think, in MMM2 um, of just like you get to decide how you want to manifest your man. But point is, is that I feel like part of me needed to have it happen this way so that I could also share with you guys that you're allowed to want to meet your person this way. I feel like this is going a little bit off tangent from the single season. So maybe I should pull this into next episode, but let me just leave it there. You're allowed to want to call him in that kind of way and not necessarily be on the apps. So anyway, being single does not mean that you need to go out and date all the time or get dating fatigue because you're on a million and one apps. That is never in the history of human beings have we done that to ourselves. The exhaustion and the come downs from all that dopamine is really hard and it really can actually affect your mental health and just your energy levels. Like, please don't kid yourself about that. Yes, you think that you're just swiping in front of the TV on a Friday night. There's so much more going on and going on than that in your brain chemistry and in your body at that time. And so, so it's important to recognize that you can be single and you can be open to dating, but not need to be actively swiping on apps. So like I was saying before, and this leads into one of the really key components of being able to actually manifest your man is loving your life as it is right now. So he is the cherry on top. So I wanted to share with you guys some ways that you can practice loving yourself up and feeling really anchored and centered and obsessed with your life before you even meet him. So I know everybody says, you know, you had to love yourself before you meet him, where you had to, you know, do X, Y, and Z before you could call him in. I do, th I really do know that it is a fucking myth that you have to be perfect and 100% healed and like all this like blah, 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 self-love before you can meet him. What they're actually meaning, I will talk about in the next episode, okay? So when people say that, they're actually meaning something else that I'm going to talk about in the episode about the three things you need to do to be calling in your ma'am. But what is important for you to understand is that if you do not love your life and if you do not feel happy in your life and like you are enjoying being single, then you are going out there with needy energy. You're going and not needy, like, oh, cute needy. Like, no, no, no. You're going out there with chasing, hunting, masculine energy. You're going out there with scarcity energy, right? You don't feel like your life is enough as it is. And so you're thinking that this certain person is going to fill your life. Newsflash, that's not going to happen. Now, I will tell you that 
I was extraordinarily happy before I met my fiance. Extraordinarily. Loved my life. Was so fucking happy with it. Everything was great. And I miss my life sometimes. I 100% do, which is why it's also important that you find independence in your relationship so you don't miss it to the point where you then hate being in a relationship. And I will also say very honestly and candidly that I found a new, just different kind of happiness when I met him. It wasn't that I became happier. It was just different. That's all it was. It was like a different kind of happiness. So, you know, people will say that you become happier when you're in a relationship or, oh, you seem so much happier now that you're dating X, Y, and Z. And maybe you are actually happier, which can tell me like, huh, are they filling a hole? And therefore, if the relationship ended, you would be fucking destroyed and it would completely shatter your whole world. Or are you a different kind of happy? Because what's really important to be able to, to be able to feel is that that person is an extra, not a filler in your life. Now, of course, I'd be fucking distraught if our relationship ended and my world would be absolutely shattered, but I, as an individual, would not feel like my whole life is ruined because I had such a foundational sense of happiness and I had such a foundational sense of self before I got into the relationship. So here are some ways that um, I love to practice loving myself up that I thought would be really helpful for you guys as well as we are in this kind of winter season. For the Australians, you're obviously going into summer, but you can still do it. Um, To really practice loving yourself up and so you're not putting out any of that scarcity energy or at least less of it. Number one is creating a luxurious skincare routine. You know, I just love fucking looking after myself. I, and by the way, I'm not high maintenance at all. Like I never get my nails done. I don't get my eyelashes done. I don't get my eyebrows done. I don't really, I'm going to start getting facials only because we have the wedding coming up and I'm like, okay, if there's one time in my life to get a facial, it's now, but never gotten facials before. I am low fucking maintenance. I hate going to the hairdressers. Like that's where we're at. But I love feeling like I have a luxurious skincare routine. And I think it's because for me, it's this feeling of I'm looking after myself. I'm honoring my body. I'm honoring my skin. It's just that self-care practice of a moment to myself. I've really figured out lately, especially since gardening, that anything where my hands are involved and I cannot be on technology really, really grounds me and makes me feel fucking amazing. So creating a luxurious skincare routine, making a bath with flowers, was in it. So these are things that, you know, it's almost like some of these things are things that you want him to do, but you're doing it for yourself because you do not need to, and everyone says this, but it's really true. You do not need to wait for him to do it for you. Do it for yourself because you actually will still get a pretty similar feeling than if he did it for you. Of course, it's nice when a man puts flowers in the bath for you, but when you do it for yourself, it still feels pretty fucking good. Um, next thing is scheduling non-toxic nail appointments. Whenever I go to New York, I go to my non-toxic nail salon. I fucking love it. It's my moment to just pamper myself up. I feel so put together after getting my nails done. And like I said, I never get my nails done. So when I do get my nails done, the world is a better place. And for those of you wondering, so I get my toenails painted because no offense to anyone that has bare toenails, but I am just not one for loving the whole bare toenail look. Um, On my fingernails, I rarely ever get them painted. I've honestly wondered whether I'll even get them done for my wedding because I am that person where I just breathe and then they're all chipped. I'm like, I didn't even use my hands. Anyway, um, but all I get is I get a buff and a clean on my fingernails. Sometimes I'll get them painted and that's like if I have an event or if I really want to just get them painted, but they last about two fucking days and it drives me up the wall. So anyway, I get my nails done, pleasuring yourself, whether that is in the form of self-pleasure like masturbation or whether it's in the form of just giving yourself what you find pleasurable. That could literally mean a cup of tea, reading a book and cozying up in front of the fire. Can we all tell that I'm excited for this season? The next thing is going to a cafe, getting a meal, reading your book or people watching, right? You would want to go to a cafe with him and like how beautiful just to sit there as a couple and read your book. So go there by yourself. I always like to think about it as romanticizing your life. The act of romanticizing your life is something that so many of us don't realize how good it feels and it takes effort. So a lot of us are just too fucking lazy these days and we don't want to put the effort into romanticizing your life. But let me tell you, when you put in those five efforts to romanticize your life, your life will change. 
you will reconnect with a pot. Like you will, well, for me, I've reconnected with this like poetic part of myself. I've reconnected with this whole other level of groundedness and expansion in the small things. Like I now find gardening, reading my book, like chilling on the sofa, so expansive. If you would have asked me five years ago, would that be expansive? I'd say absolutely not. I got to be on a plane. I got to be rushing around. I got to be doing something. But now I find so much expansion in the really little things that relax my nervous system. Um, so the other things that I want to test you guys is, um, waking up early to spend time alone before the day starts or before the house wakes up. If you are in a relationship, especially this is for you. I do this every morning. I wake up most mornings, uh, before my fiance and I spend just some me time. I'm alone. He's asleep. His alarm hasn't even gone off yet. I bring him up tea sometimes. Um, or we've been trying sometimes like bringing him up an espresso. I'm trying to get him on like you know, good quality coffee and whatnot. Cause he's a guy and like, this isn't, this is like some of the stuff is new for him. Oh, I will say, I know a lot of you want me to also do an episode on how to get your guy to do the work slash be healthy, etc. I just remembered this. So I'm going to write this down to also give you guys that one, um, ASAP as well. I feel like these are some fun, like December episodes because they're just easy to listen to whilst you're on a walk. And that's not like heavy trauma listening or like trauma, um, education, decluttering your space right? That's a beautiful one. It makes us feel put together. It makes us feel like we've prioritized our sense of well-being. Uh, the next one also is just really being honest with yourself and your own needs. The kindest thing you can do to yourself sometime is to say no, or is to stay in or to not do the workout or to not go outside or not, sorry, not going for the walk to have an early bed. Like getting really honest with actually what you need can be really, really nourishing for your body buying yourself flowers. I love the act of buying myself flowers. It, again, it's that feeling of I'm not going to sit in scarcity and wait for somebody else to give me a feeling that I want to have. I'm just going to give myself that feeling. And if somebody else also buys me flowers the same day, amazing. It's a win. Um, making a delicious meal and plating it up beautifully. How often will you plate your partner's meal more beautifully than your own? A lot of us do this. I used to do this and I picked up on it. I'm like, huh, this is so interesting. I'll go to more effort to plating up his meal than I will my meal. So I stopped doing that. And now I plate up both of our meals beautifully. And you know what's so sweet that he was, he said he like was forcing it into my brain last night. He's like, we've been together for nearly two years and it still hasn't clicked. Is I will tell him dinner's ready before I've served myself. And he's like, no, dinner is only ready when you have also served yourself, not just when you've served me. He will not start eating and he will not even accept his plate until I have literally made my plate and mine is also ready. It's the sweetest thing. So, but it's like, for me, it was just this realization when he started doing this of, and he ran into my brain again last night because I, I, I slipped up on it last night is how we will treat our partners better than we will actually treat ourselves, right? Start a DIY project. Maybe you can't start gardening if you're in winter, but you could be plant planting your tulip bulbs, your peony bulbs, your daffodil bulbs. I'm about to do them this um, this weekend if they get in the mail. Hurry up, people. Um, next one is investing in your business or your hobbies. There is no better feeling than when you pay for something that you want. Because think about it. Again, if your child, if your partner was like, I desperately need this to feel better, or I need this to be happy, or I really want this thing, and they are asking for you to pay for it, or they're wanting your help, you would never say no, right? You would never question it. You would be like anything for you because you love them. But isn't it interesting how we will hold ourselves back? We will question. It's like we deprioritize our happiness and we put everybody else's happiness in front of ours, including spending habits. But what's what we need to remember is that for a lot of us these days, we're making our own money as women. So it is so, so beautiful when we actually take some of that hard earned money and put it back into things that make us happy. Yes, do things for your partner, do things for your children. That's all really important. And also remembering that when you invest in yourself, whether it's a hobby, whether it's a nice hotel room, whether it's a beautiful dress, whether it's paying for a course that you want to buy, whether it is coming to my immersion, when you invest in yourself in money and also in time, what you're saying is I deserve this. 
I deserve the life I want to have. I deserve my dreams. I deserve to be happy. I just like you are literally saying that you deserve happiness in some level, even if it's you are paying for a dress, right? What you're saying is that you deserve to feel and look beautiful. So yes, you're going to buy the dress. So do not underestimate that. Um, the next one is pulling angel cards, lighting candles. Like these are the smallest things, ladies, that can bring that sense of wholesomeness into your day and into your environment that we just forget. We really just forget how powerful these small, small things can can be and how much they can shift our energy. Other thing is just soaking in the rays of the sun. For those of you, if you're in Australia, you might not want to do this because you're going to be fucking boiling. But for those of us in winter in the US and in Europe, my God, how good is that feeling when you are rugged up and you go outside and you sit in a chair and you just let your face be in the sun and you feel the sun penetrating through your skin? Oh, it's the best feeling, right? So can you do more of that? Can you can you give gift yourself that time of going outside and just feeling the beauty, the abundance, the expansion, the like infinite energy of the sun? Because when you when you do that, it's also this feeling of just being looked after. It's this feeling of like mother nature has got me right? That's really what it is. It's like when you're sitting under the moon, when you sit under the moon, it's this feeling of, God, my problems are so fucking small. It's almost like the sun, the moon, nature. It just puts things into perspective for us. Those of you that are interested, Embodiment of Dating is the masterclass that I wish I had when I was going through that hard time of just figuring out dating, right? I wanted to feel good about men. I wanted to feel good and have a strong and confident mindset about the dating world, which I know a lot of us do not have these days. I hear it all the time. Literally, the lady at the nursery was telling me about it the other day. We don't have a good mindset about dating and we need help. I mean, I know I'm in a relationship, but I needed help. And this was the masterclass that I seriously wish that I had. I know it can seem like it's a dry fucking desert out there, but so much of it is in the way that we show up in it. I'm not gonna lie, modern dating is hard. Let's not beat around the bush. And the embodiment of dating masterclass is going to help you show up in a way that you are proud of, where you aren't leaking your energy everywhere, and in a way that actually gets you results with good men not being a a anxious, wow, an anxious or avoidant mess. So for those of you that actually want to have good results with dating and you are dating masculine men that lead you, that chase you, that devour you, that want you, you need to get the Embodying of Dating Masterclass because I just make it easy for you in how to be feminine in dating, especially a strong feminine woman in dating. You need to do the Embodying of Dating Masterclass. Additionally, if you are a woman that is dating and you make a lot of money and you probably make either the same amount of him, same amount as him is if not more, then I would also check out my feminine female breadwinner program because that would also be really helpful for you. And for those of you in a relationship where you do make a good chunk of money or more, or even just make any money, if you feel like money sometimes becomes a bit of a uh in the relationship, let's not let it be a uh in the relationship because it's fucking money. So also the feminine female breadwinner would be a really great option for you. And then the last thing that I want to give you guys on the note of nature is putting your feet in the grass. Now, obviously, if there's snow everywhere. That could be a little bit of a different story. But can you prioritize spending 15 minutes in nature this season for so many different reasons? But the number one thing that's been the biggest game changer for me, the more time that I've been outside and getting my hands in the fucking mud is literally a feeling of disconnection in a good way disconnection of people wanting me, needing me, social media, at somebody else's beck and call. It's just this feeling of I'm in my own bubble. I'm in my own fucking world. And I allow myself to listen to my thoughts. I feel my body and I, I feel expanded. Like I was saying before, I fucking feel expanded. And guys, I cannot tell you the incredible things that have come into my life as a result of finding expansion in small things not just finding expansion in all the amazing travel that we do. And like, my God, do I find expansion in those things as well? A hundred percent, but, or at, no, and I should say, and 
it's really fabulous when you can shift your environment and just invest a little bit of time and money into the environment that you spend your whole day in to ensuring that also feels really, really expansive. It doesn't mean that you have to go out and buy a $10,000 couch from Restoration Hardware. But maybe you ask, you go out and you spend $200 on a really, really plush, non-toxic blanket that's going to go uh, like a throw rug that's going to go over the sofa. Maybe you go and you buy a bunch of candles that are non-toxic. Maybe you invest in some red lights so that you can have red lights going in your bedroom at nighttime rather than white light. We have red lights in our bedroom. Um, there's just such small things that can make such a profound difference. Maybe it's literally, you know, doing the course that you've wanted to do forever so that you feel expanded in another area of your life from the comfort of your very own couch, right? There's so many different opportunities for expansion in our lives. So for those of you that are single or for those of you that are in a relationship, I hope this started to disperse some ideas, but more importantly for your homework for today's episode is I want you to get clear on the things that make you feel really expanded. Expanded. What are the things that make you just feel like activated and connected to yourself? And can you filter them back into your life? Can you start doing them again so that you actually feel like he is the cherry on top of your already gluten free, dairy free, sugar free cupcake? Not that he is the fucking cupcake. Okay. Super important differentiation. For those of you that haven't yet bought your ticket to the immersion, please make sure you do because on the note of feeling like he is the extra piece, it is so important that you do that foundational work and that you are not also bringing all this trauma, wounding, anxiousness, dysregulated nervous system into your relationship because all of it is going to make it 10 times harder, right? When you have a dysregulated nervous system, when you have a pile of unhealed trauma from your past, good fucking luck feeling like you can find independence in your relationship or refine yourself or just stay connected to yourself or that you or you know not feeling anxiously attached to, anxiously attached to him or whatever it is so the next episode that I give you guys um it might, it might not be the next episode but one of the next ones will be around the three um really important things to manifest in your man so hang tight for that one make sure you buy your tickets I really want you guys to know that if you have any questions at all about the immersion, whether it's for you, whether it's not for you, you know, other alternatives. If you just want to like send your case through, I love when you guys do this, just send your case through and ask me, is the immersion a fit? And tell me, Monica, why am I going to benefit from the immersion? Like ask me that question, right? Send through your situation and then ask me to tell you how exactly the immersion is going to help based on what you've shared with me. And I will. I know it's a big investment in time, in money for so many of you. So I want you to know that I am so here to answer your questions. And I want to answer your questions because I want you to feel like you've really given yourself the opportunity to actually consider this, especially for those of you that really feel like you want to come. If you haven't taken that step of even just asking the question, asking any questions, just inquiring, reading the website page, watching the testimonial video. If you haven't even gone that far, please do yourself that favor because you can still do all of that and say, no, I don't want to go hundred percent, but it feels good when you've actually made a really informed decision, not making a decision from a place of scarcity, of fear. Okay. So I'm going to love you and leave you guys. I hope that you love this episode. Please share it on your Instagram stories. If you haven't already, I really appreciate when you guys do that, tag me so I can repost it. And, um, don't forget to leave me a DM if you want an episode on like things to do to kind of get to that winter season. Otherwise, I might just make an email for it or a blog post. So there'll be something coming out for that. Do not worry. And I will see you guys in the next episode.